All right, welcome back to Extra 8 Hours. Today we're making a video on hypnogagic imagery and how does it affect uh, lucid dreaming and how can you use it to your advantage to actually initiate a lucid dream. So first things first, if you don't know what a hypnogagic imagery is, basically think of it, you can do it yourself right now. If you cup your hand over your eyes and make it black and just stare at the darkness, you might see little blobs. As we're going to sleep, and you might have had this experience before yourself, excuse me, but as we're drifting off to sleep, um, you'll often see little pictures or little blobs appear up across your sight. That is hypnogagic imagery. Now, you can actually use this imagery to initiate a lucid dream. But before I get into that, I just want to make sure you really understand a little bit more about hypnogagia. So, hypnogagia is the broader term that refers to hypnogogic imagery hypnogogic imagery but what the point i really want to make about it is that not only can hypnogagia uh, affect your visual so you see blobs when you close your eyes but it can also affect your auditory you and your it can affect all your senses actually so another great example of this if you've ever been jumping on a trampoline and gone straight to bed after relatively soon you might have had the feeling of yourself jumping still while you were sleeping if you've been on a boat maybe and you're constantly rocking all day, when you get off, oftentimes you continue to feel this kind of rhythm. That's hypnogagia happening when you're going to sleep. Okay. Um, now, one other point about hypnogagia, what's basically going on here is this is just the process of you going from wakefulness to sleep. So your brain is sort of shutting down and what they found is basically that our the front part of our brain typically shuts down earlier than the back part of our brain. So one theory for why we might have hypnagogic imagery is that since the front part is shutting down and the back part's still kind of on, and that's the back part's where your kind of eye, eyes, uh, your eye connects to your brain kind of type thing. So that's where your imagery is formed. Um, there's a thought process that since that's so active still while the front's asleep, that's what's causing the visuals to appear. Now. Getting aside from the science part of hypnogogic uh, imagery and hypnogogia in general, what I want to do is show you how can you use this to actually um, initiate lucid dreams. So there are a ton of different ways you can do this. And the most common way people typically initiate into hypnogogic uh, state is they use something called the wild technique. So if you haven't heard of that, that stands for the wake induced lucid dream. Uh, and basically what you do is you go to sleep and you try not to move as much as possible until you fall asleep. And then uh, just try to stay aware as you pass from this state of awakefulness to asleep while keeping your mental state aware. And hopefully the hope is that your body falls asleep. Uh, and there's a bunch of imagery coming up from the hypnogogic, hypnogogic state. And you can kind of walk into a dream from there. Um, a few tips to make this happen. So... Let's say, for example, you want to use your hypnogogic state to initiate a lucid dream. What you would want to do, number one, you want to go to sleep and just try to stay mentally awake or letting your body physically fall asleep. And the way you do this is by letting your body just kind of rest and not moving any part of your body at all. Okay, that's important. You don't move your body and you just rest off to sleep. What will happen after a time is your body will start to maybe feel pressure or feel weird. But eventually what should happen is as you're asleep, your body, it should paralyze a little bit. While you could still always move it, it should feel like it's getting paralyzed kind of. That's your sleep paralysis, kick, par paralysis kicking in. And then you should start seeing images on your face. And the hope is that you can transition from here to into a lucid dream by slowly easing the hypnagogic uh, imagery into a dream so that you can actually step in and boom, that's a lucid dream from there. Now, the hard part a lot of people get tripped up on is how do you actually transition from, you know, seeing the blobs into actually having a lucid dream? And there's a few tips that I'm actually gonna give for this. So number one, um, let it happen. The first thing that uh, I would recommend is try to be a little bit more passive about actually initiating the lucid dream. Um, you don't have to force it. And oftentimes when we start forcing the hypnagogic imagery or paying too much attention to it, we'll actually keep yourself too awake, too tense, and we won't be able to drift off into that sleep state that we want. And then you'll never be able to enter into that lucid dream. 
Alternatively, what you should do is try to be somewhat passive. Just observe it. Don't really judge it. Just let it happen and slowly keep going. And just try to get into a meditative state, really, as you drift off to sleep. And hopefully, things will keep going. You stay in an awareness, a meditative state. Uh, and then, boom, you have a lucid dream. The other way you can do it. Now, say you want to be active with your hypnogogic imagery. And you want to actually find ways to actively turn it from nothingness or blobs into a lucid dream. The way you would do that, okay, is basically um, try to work with it almost. So let's say, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, trying to do the wild technique, I'm, my eyes are closed, and I'm trying to work with my hypnogogic imagery that I'm seeing right now. What I would do is I would try to imagine the blobs kind of getting more angular, or if there's lines coming across, I would try to put a bend in the line. Just try to wish up different kind of imagine uh images so that i can kind of play with the images and eventually i'll start actually trying to imagine different things so i try to imagine say it started getting a little bit more visual i'd start trying to imagine myself putting my hand through grass and actually trying to feel it i would try to imagine myself hearing you know i'd go different senses hearing whatever i actually want to hear say hearing the the water from the waterfall that i want to be on or i'll start imagining myself I'll imagine start looking down at the earth with the imagery. Like I'll start trying to make clear pictures. Uh, and that's another way you can actually start kind of being more active in initiating the lucid dream with your imagery. Um, the last point I do want to make a note here, not everybody is going to be uh, best off using visuals for the hypnagogic state. Hypnagogia is a very broad term. And as I was mentioning earlier, it can affect different senses. Um, I know I watched a video by Beyond Lucid Dreaming and he talked about how he used the auditory side of his hypnagogia to actually initiate his lucid dream. So if you're a very musical person, one thing you could do is instead of focusing on the the, the blobs or maybe you're, you're closing your eyes and not moving and the blobs never come, you can get into this meditative state by kind of doing a certain rhythm in your head or listening to a very so a good song that you really like. That can get you into that state and then the images will flow after that and then you know go from there to the images to imagining then you're in the lucid dream um that's basically it for hypnagogia it's just and if you look at the definition of wikipedia it pretty much just refers to the state of in between waking and sleeping and technically when you wake up you go through hypnagogia as well because you're going from sleep to awake um should you be scared of it? Some people ask this. I'll just throw this in the end here. Not really. Uh, sleep paralysis, that's the possible effects from it. Um, sleep paralysis isn't bad for you. You go through it every night. Um, and honestly, if you can get into sleep paralysis, you can actually use that to your advantage. Um, some people, for example, they'll say they get into sleep paralysis and they start hearing kind of scary or different voices. That's a form of a hypnagogic auditory experience that you're having. What you can do is you can kind of get into that meditative state, just focus and let be, be aware and just kind of see what happens. And as things go on, you can start willing images and start willing sounds and just start willing feelings to happen and or imagining, I should say, instead of willing. Uh, and that will allow you to transition into a lucid dream. And that's really why we're here, right? So I uh, hope that video was useful. If it was, you're welcome. Leave a like, I guess. Uh, and just remember, guys, Lucid dreaming is easy once you know what to do. Have a great day. Okay.